Hey guys, what's happening? This is Tommy Dimsdale with the Dimsdale Debate coming to you with another uh, brand new weekly video. Hey Tommy, did you get a brand new studio? Why, yes I did, sir. This is uh, this is our brand new studio and this, we're going to be filming in both locations, so uh, just to mix it up just a little bit. But anyways, this week I've got a treat for you. A good friend of mine named Brandon Wood, uh, who originally was kind of centrist um, and found his way into college, and because the college was so liberal, he ended up being even more and more and more conservative and it really tempered him. So we're going to hear about his story and how the secularism of college and just the overall vibe of uh, snowflakes and trigger warnings, how that affected him on campus and how, um, you know, if you've got someone that's going to college or if you are someone that's about to go to college, this will really help you out and uh, instruct you on how he was able to handle the controversy and how you can too. So guys, strap in. Thank you for listening. Uh, welcome to the Dimsdale Debate. scruffy-looking hippie on two businesses. <laughs> well, there's a reason for this appearance, and quite simply, it was camouflage. When I first got to college, I was 18 years old. I was terrified, and that's how a lot of people feel when they first arrive. You're questioning a lot of things about yourself. It's a really transitional period in your life. My first day on campus, I met two girls, and I was talking to them, and I struck it up with one. You know, we, we got along pretty well, and she walked away, and the other girl seemed to know her really well. So I said, well, is that a friend of yours? You know, uh, could you know, could you help me meet her later? Because I was interested in her, and I was immediately called a sexist and a womanizer. And I was just like, I, I, I'm just saying she's nice. I, I don't understand. And from that point onwards, I was I knew that I had gotten myself into something. I had two options for college. I was offered fantastic scholarships from a very conservative Christian college that was very strict, and from a very prominent liberal arts college that was not so strict, and me being 18, getting out of the house for the first time, I thought, well, you know, I am a Christian, but I, I, want, I want freedom, you know, I, I, want, I want like full reign, I don't want any restrictive rules, so I chose a liberal arts college. Now, whether or not that was a mistake depends on how, how much I value my experiences and what I learned from it, and I think I learned quite a lot. So going past that first day, once, once I realized that saying something innocuous could hurt my reputation so poor, and make me look so poor, and could gain me these labels that I didn't like, I, I immediately began to try to correct my behavior. I tried to appease these people. So I, I stopped saying anything that could be construed as offensive for any people. And if I said anything that anybody was offended by, I immediately stopped it. I wouldn't say it again. Uh, I would apologize. And then after about the first year of college, I started getting into the, the higher up courses. And I progressed pretty fast. I did pretty well. I got A's and B's. So I got into some higher courses faster than I would have. And in the higher courses at my college, it was mandatory learning that you had white privilege, that uh, you had male privilege, you know, that, and, and some professors even taught communism as the correct ideology, like openly, unashamed, unabashedly, you know, communism is correct. They openly promoted radical liberalism. It was part of the curriculum. I had one professor, the chair of the communications department, whom I had to deal with quite a lot because my degree was a dual major in sociology and communications. I could not escape this woman. It was part of my major. She proudly labeled herself a radical liberal, and if you did not do the same, her course became harder for you. So this was the situation I was in. I could go and I could espouse my beliefs and be persecuted for it, or I could do what I did and allow them to make me feel shame. They made me feel shame for my conservatism. They made me feel shame for my religion. And this isn't to say that you won't encounter people that call themselves Christians at these colleges. Some of them may really be Christians, may, may believe it with all their heart, but a lot of them are essentially Christians in name only. If you bring up, if you bring up the Bible to them, you cite, you cite sections that you feel justify your beliefs and, and you know, your personal attitudes towards life. They'll say, oh, no, 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 you know, we, we don't need to believe that anymore. We're modern Christians. You know, they just disregard whatever they don't like, whatever doesn't fit in with the ideology. So even when I met other Christians on campus, I couldn't express myself to them out of fear that they would be that way. So it, it taught me one thing, and that one thing was to shut up. It taught me to shut up, to be quiet, to sit down, to repeat exactly what they told me over and over again. And I did that for the better part of three years. It got worse 
and worse and worse. And what they wanted me to believe was more and more extreme. And I knew something was wrong. I knew it couldn't be the case. And I tried very hard to believe it. I wanted to believe it because I was at college. I was paying 40 grand a year to be there. I figured if this is what my professors are telling me, it has to be right. This has to be the case. I mean, why else would I be paying them this money? But it finally just came to a point where I couldn't lie anymore. And at first, it was just a few little things that I tried to challenge in class. I would raise my hand and I'd say, well, professor, I don't think that's quite right. Uh, I, I think that you know, this and this might kind of give an alternate perspective on it. And the professors were usually a little taken aback by that. How dare I challenge them? Uh, so that started to give me a bit of a negative reputation. And finally, I just went full bore and I just started openly being a conservative. I just started openly, unashamed, presenting my beliefs. And I felt a thousand times better, but the persecution got a thousand times better. <coughs> I had people openly tell me that they wanted me to die. People that were my friends, people that I hung out with, that I had in my room, that we'd watched countless movies together, played some games, you know, gone out to events. Like, I'd spent a lot of time with some of these people. And they hurled vitriol at me. They were vicious. And I couldn't understand it. But as I started to speak up, something else happened, something that was very relieving. I started to speak up. I started to be unashamed in my opinions. And a few other people started to approach me. They said, you know what, I, I kind of think that too. I kind of believe that too. I didn't know there was anyone else here. I thought that I was the only one. And through that, I was able to network. I was able to form a group of conservatives on a radical liberal campus. There were only about two dozen of us. But we had someone. We had people we could talk to. So the very first piece of advice I have to give you is do not spend the first three years of your college education feeling ashamed about yourselves. Don't feel shame due to your religion. Do not feel shame due to your political beliefs. If somebody tries to censor you, if they try to shout you down, just be polite. Be Courteous, you know, say, I, well, I disagree with you, here's why. Do not get into a shouting match. Don't, don't get into insults. That's what they want. They want to get you in, into a place where they can make you look bad, where they can accuse you of being a bad person. Just be polite. And sometimes when you be polite, they'll react negatively still. I'll give you an example. I got into a polite discussion about border control. Bad, bad idea at a liberal college. Got into a polite discussion about border control one afternoon in the lunchroom, and some people overheard. And uh, my friend and I, he was a reasonable individual, so he wasn't the problem, but my friend and I were talking, and I said, Look, I understand where you're coming from, but in my opinion, we either need to enforce the border laws that we have, or we need to change the laws. And that's all I said. I said nothing disparaging about Hispanics. I said nothing disparaging about anybody. I just said we should change the law or enforce the law, which I thought was a very reasonable opinion. A few days later, a rumor started to spread around the campus that I was a member of the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was shocked, and I, I, just, I didn't know what to do about it. And, and a couple of people that I thought were my friends came to the point. I heard this, and I was like, is there even still a chapter of the KKK? Does that even still exist? Is that around here? Is I, I, I was completely taken aback. So even when you're polite, you might still run into that. But that doesn't mean you're failing. That, that just means that there are people that are trying to box you back into that shame. Now, when you're in class, you're, you're going to have teachers that say things that are off the wall that you don't agree with. And you might, your, your first inclination might be, whoa, 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 whoa. You, know, you might want to interrupt. Uh, you might want to be really aggressive about it. You know, sometimes I, did, I, I wanted to do that, and a couple of times towards the end there, I did, because I had nothing to lose at that point. I was a senior. I was close to graduating. They couldn't hurt me too bad. Uh, but I found a much more effective route is just to be very polite, raise your hand, say, well, excuse me, professor, uh, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, I'll give you an example that's very specific, global warming. I had the chair of the sociology department, my second major, he was teaching in class one day, and it was completely unrelated to the class, but he just started going on and on about global warming. Global warming was nowhere near the subject we were supposed to be talking about. So I raised my hand, and I said, well, excuse me, professor, but some of the things you're citing, uh, you know, you, you talk about a, an inconvenience truth, but if you actually go back and watch the documentary, most of those predictions didn't come true. We're long past where that was supposed to happen. They said a couple of years back that uh, by this year, the UK would never see another snowfall. Well, the UK had its worst snowfall ever this year. And I started pointing things like that out to them, just very polite, very respectful, rattling off hard facts, getting sources for those facts. And by the end of it, the professor went, well, perhaps you're right, you know, maybe we've made some progress, maybe global warming's going to slow down something. That's not exactly where I wanted him to end up, you know, but... I reached a compromise, and it's possible. So you're going to see people <laughs> behave in such a way that will that will be very off-putting. But you you can't let it box you down. You can't let it put you into a place where you're afraid to speak up. Now, you you might 
feel reluctant to participate in the, the larger so social apparatuses of college. You might feel reluctant to join groups, uh, to, to sign up for things. You might not want to go to the, like, the fairs they do. And I would say go. I would say go, because that's the best place to meet and talk to people. Because it's not only just about defending yourself. It's not only just about uh, you know, not being ashamed of yourself and finding a few friends that you can hold on to. It's, it's about trying to stand up to a larger apparatus, to a larger machine that is attempting to indoctrinate all of our youths. So if you, if you allow them to even, even if you find a few conservative friends, find a few Christian friends, you know, pu you, know you pull them aside, you all start hanging out, you form your little bubble, that's great, you know, it's, it's a lot more pleasant, I found. But if you don't go out into the public sphere, if you don't break your comfort zone and go to these events and go to places where you know there are going to be people that might be aggressive towards you, then you, you, might, you might have made your own time kind of okay, but you've ceased to fight back against the system at large. Now, right now, we're at, we're at a peak for all of this. Things are as bad as they will get. They might get just a little bit worse from here on out, but we're reaching the peak of it. And when I say that, I mean the, the peak of the hysteria. We're, we're going through uh, what sociologists would term a, a moral panic right now. It's, it's lasted roughly seven years or so, and during a moral panic, people, people are, get convinced in their head that they know what's right. And they know, oh, we're here to stay, uh, Clinton will be the continuation of Obama, and so on and so forth. They try to convince us that it was a done conclusion, there was no fighting progress. That's not the case. This kind of thing has happened over and over again, all around the world, all throughout human history, and through our society. We have had several moral panics in our country's relatively young history already. So this one will fade just like the others. And I would be willing to bet good money that it will fade in the next two to three years. So if you're going to be in college two or three years from now, you know, it's, it's going to be better for you than it was for me. It's going to be easier for you than it was for me because it will start to clear up. I know it doesn't seem like it, but it will start to clear up. And you'll, you won't hear much about moral panics yet. They never really talk about them until after they're over. Uh, only really sociologists care. We're weird like that. But if you're interested in it all, a quick plug. I have a book coming out next month called The Problematic Panic. Look it up in late November and you'll find it. It's all about the current moral panic. I think that's about the long short of it. Does anybody have any questions, any specific requests for how to handle the situation? I got one. Mm -hmm. um, describe yourself, uh, how you position yourself politically versus before college as after college. Did it change? What changes did you see in yourself well, going in and then coming out? I was... I was pretty, I'm still pretty moderate conservative. I, I'm more on the libertarian side of things. I don't, I don't seek to enforce much upon anyone. You know, I don't care what you're doing as long as you're not hurting anyone. But go, going into college, I was, I, was, I was pretty, just pretty dead center, like barely even conservative. Like I was still kind of conservative. I had, some, I had some opinions that they didn't like. But like I wasn't that hard of a conservative. Going through college actually made me more conservative because I was forced to do my own independent research. Uh, I was forced to I was forced to look into things farther than I normally would have because my professors weren't going to give me that information the textbooks weren't going to give me that information so college liberal arts college was the best thing to ever happen to me it was the quickest way that I could have ever become a, like a, a farther right conservative because they they forced me to essentially is that yeah does that help yes sir anything yeah. else any questions. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs>